してくれた一人の男が今日も行く「せがたさんしろせがたさんしろせがさたしろ」「ヘイエブリバディジム here with a buying guide for you today for the Japanese Sega Saturn so that you can get yourself a console and a handful of games to start you off and not have to spend too much money. That's kind of the point of this one. It's going to be a multi part series, but for、uh, this video in particular, I want to recommend games that are not too terribly expensive, and of course, they're all fun and they're fairly English friendly as well, so you can get a collection started.、Um, first, I do want to say. That、uh, when you're going to be picking up import games, I know a lot of people go to eBay because that's kind of、um, maybe the most、uh, convenient place to go for a lot of people. You just go and look up a game and you can buy it or get in on an auction or something.、Um, but、uh, a lot of people kind of lament the prices of eBay.、Uh, so I'm going to put a bunch of links down in the description to alternate websites that you can use、uh, to pick up Japanese games. Um, for example, some people don't know that like Sudugaya has an online store. Also, like Hard Off and Book Off, they have online stores.、Um, other、uh, game stores and like hobby shops have online stores.、Um, mostly they're in Japanese, so there's going to be some trial and error, but you can at least give it a shot. Also, I will put a link to some proxy services. That way you can buy games and have them shipped to you. Most proxy services will only charge like maybe a few bucks per package to forward them onto you.、Um, so that's kind of like your, your workaround.、Uh, if you don't want to use eBay, you can use、uh, Japanese game websites and their auction sites as well, like Japanese、uh, Yahoo auctions and、uh, Japanese Amazon as well. Um, because with new things shipped from Amazon, they have international shipping.、Um, but when you're buying, like, you know, old retro games and stuff like that, they won't.、Uh, so you can buy stuff there, have it go through a proxy, and get it、uh, no problem. So definitely go and check out those links、uh, at the end of this video if you want to go and buy some Saturn games.、Uh, with that being said, we're going to get to the games uh, uh, in just a minute. But first,、uh, a little bit、uh, about some hardware. Now, what I have here. Uh, are two of the uh, most um, common models of Saturn. We have the uh, gray uh, Saturn, which is a、uh, very nice, very cool, very sleek look. And then we have、uh, my preference,、uh, which is the、uh, white Saturn. And I like the white controllers as well with the、uh, multicolored buttons. These are super common.、Um, the Saturn in Japan like, outsold the N64. So there are more Saturns than N64s, literally millions of Saturns. Sold in Japan, so they're not hard to come by.、Um, if you've ever watched any of my game hunting videos in Hard Off or in Akihabara, I, I come across these all the time.、Um, so I would not pay more than 40 to 60 bucks for one of these because they are common. That is typically what they go for. Obviously, if you want to like boxed or in some especially like great condition,、um, that might be a little more, but just for the console, the necessary hookups, and like a controller. Uh, 40 to 60 bucks is what you're going to pay. There are other models like the Hitachi Saturn, the Victor Saturn, the、uh, This Is Cool kind of transparent shell Saturn. Those are all more expensive、um, and they're pretty cool as well. So if you want to go for those,、uh, by all means do. But、uh, these are very common and should be very inexpensive. So definitely don't go over 60 bucks when picking these up. Also, if you live in North America, It、uh, should be no problems at all playing these.、Um, the, no voltage differences. I had、um, read somewhere that over time there's like slight differences that could lead to some kind of damage. I never experienced that. Obviously, if you live in Europe, it's going to be like, a, you know, different for you. The voltage is different, so you might need like some kind of step down converter, something like that. But if you're in North America, you can grab a Sega Saturn、uh, Japanese and hook it up and play it without any kind of worries. Um, also, if you don't feel like buying a Japanese Saturn, you can just buy an action replay cart. The action replay cart will act as kind of、uh, a breaker for the region lock, so you can play both US and Japanese region games. And it also serves as a RAM expansion cart, which I have a couple of them here.、Uh, there are the、uh, 1 megabyte RAM expansion and the 4 megabyte RAM expansion carts.、Um, One megabyte,、uh, mostly like a lot of the、uh, Neo Geo ports to the Saturn.、Uh, 
uh, use this, while a lot of the Capcom ports use the 4 megabyte RAM card. And some games it's actually optional, like Marvel Super Heroes and Cotton 2. If you want to, you can use uh, the RAM, extra RAM to have some extra frames of animation and shorten some load times, but you don't actually need them uh, to play the games. And a lot of the games that require the RAM carts, you can actually buy them in little boxes like this, where they contain both the game and the RAM card. But if you already have the RAM, uh, RAM carts or the action replay cart, you can actually just buy these games, usually just by themselves, uh, and save yourself a little bit of money because these obviously cost a little bit more when they come with the RAM cart. Um, but I mean, that's basically it. Uh, these Saturns, they're, they're common, uh, they're fairly inexpensive, you need some RAM carts to play a few games, but if you have an action replay, you're fine, and as long as you have at least one of them, you can buy all the other games that require the RAM cart without having to buy them bundled together like this, um, unless you want to, because the boxes are pretty cool. Uh, anyway, that out of the way, uh, definitely go check out those links, go buy your Saturns, go buy your replay cart. Uh, by whatever it is you need to get started playing some Saturn games. And now we're going to take a look at some games that I think would be good as like a starter pack. They are fun games, they are fairly English friendly, and they're not too expensive either. Didn't want to go over 50 bucks. Some of them are as low as $10. They're very inexpensive. And today I actually got some help from my good friend Sarumaru from over at Retro Japan. So actually I'm going to let him get started. He's going to tell you about some Saturn games, I'm going to tell you about some Saturn games, and hopefully uh, this will help you get started on your way to collecting for the Japanese Sega Saturn. Sarumaru, get us started. Sega Sanshiro, Sega Sanshiro, Sega Saturn! Yeah! Hey everyone, Saru here, and I just want to give a big thank you to Kid Shoryuken for letting me be a part of this video. Now, let's get to my list. The very first Sega Saturn game under $50 on my list is... Detana Twinbee Yahoo Deluxe Pack. So let's start off with the first game in this collection, Detana Twinbee. Originally released in the arcade, Detana Twinbee is everything you would come to expect from a Konami game during its heyday. The game is vibrant with color with some really nice sprite work for the time. There are also some really cute cutscenes depicting the Twinbee characters and their pilots, giving this version of Twinbee a bit more character than the previous ones in the series. The gameplay is fairly tight, but I feel like the hitboxes are a little on the big side. But I do like the sounds, they're nice and thumpy and it's very fitting. The music is pretty catchy making this game an overall good gameplay experience. Now, what I really want to talk to you about is the other game in this collection, Twin B Yaho. Twin B Yaho basically takes everything the previous game did right and cranked it up a few notches, like big time. Yeah, the tedious bell power-up thing is, well, still a thing, but some people actually like it, and it really isn't a major gripe. The game feels much smoother, and the visuals are amazing, with a look that I think still holds up well today. So let's get a bit into the gameplay. This time around, you get to choose which charging power-up you start off with, which is a welcome addition. The controls feel kind of fluid, but you quickly become accustomed to it. I absolutely love the music in this game. You'll find yourself humming many of the stage tunes well after you've turned off your Saturn. And if I had to pick one major gripe with the game, that would be that the game is just too short. I think at least one or more stages would have been perfect, but that doesn't diminish the experience at all. This game is about $25 on average, and I think that that's a pretty good deal for two really fun games. A good pick for your Saturn starter pack for sure. So I decided to start off with one of my personal favorite fighting games on the Saturn, and that's good old X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and really it's only competition for me would come from the other Capcom fighters on the console, of which there are quite a few, and a handful of them were exclusive to Japan, which is a crying shame because the Saturn ports are always amazing. Ready? 
In the case of X-Men vs. Street Fighter, it is, for all intents and purposes, arcade perfect, and it plays like an absolute dream. It requires the 4 meg RAM card, but luckily the most common way to find it is bundled with the RAM card, in which case it usually goes for about 30 or 40 bucks. But if you already have the RAM cart or an action replay cart, standalone copies of this game are dirt cheap, usually no more than 10 bucks or so, with the caveat being that you don't get that cool box that it comes in. And again, this is an arcade perfect game, so the gameplay is super smooth and the graphics are amazing and include all of the frames of animation, and the load times are really short as well. There is also a PlayStation port available, but it pales in comparison to this one. It lacks the tag fighting that this game introduced and is very well known for, and it doesn't look or play nearly as good. So short of getting a CPS2 board for your home arcade, this is the best way to play X-Men vs. Street Fighter if you want to play it on physical media. It's one of the best fighting games on the console, and it's very affordable. So if you're just getting into Saturn import collecting, this is a perfect game to start with. Let's take a look at some classic puzzle action with Sakura Wars Hanagumi Tyson Columns on the Sega Saturn. Sakura Wars Hanagumi Tyson Columns is a puzzle game based on the Sega franchise that was hugely popularized on the Sega Saturn in the 1990s. It's about a troop of girls who star in musical plays but also happen to be part of a military program funded by the government that lets them ride around in these steam-powered robots to protect the city versus the forces of evil. How's that for a premise? Originally, Sakura Wars was a dating sim strategy game, with Sakura Wars Columns being a bit of a departure from its original game. Being that it's a columns game with its match three or more in a row gameplay, anyone can jump right in and start playing. This game starts off with a few modes to get into. You have your main game titled Cinderella Mode, where you choose the girl you want as your star, per se, and take her all the way to the role as Cinderella by kicking the other girl's asses at columns and versus battles. As you do. There is also a story mode where each character has their own unique story and you get to square off with one of the other lovely maidens in versus battles. Sometimes these characters present you with challenges that require certain conditions to clear the stage, making it for an interesting gameplay experience. There are also single player modes like classic columns mode where you can play infinitely until you lose or you can play a mode where you play nothing but the special condition stages and finally you have a classic player versus player mode where you and a friend can battle it out. Adding to that classic Columns formula is the ability to perform offensive and defensive attacks, making Sakura Wars Columns a much more competitive game than any of its previous Columns predecessors. The music is excellent and consists of familiar tunes all written by Kohei Tanaka, the original composer of all the other Sakura Wars games. I'm a huge fan of the Sakura Wars series, and there's been a lot of developments in the series as of recent, like a new installment to the series, and a recent English patch for the first game on the Sega Saturn. Even if you aren't a fan of this series, but you like puzzles and enjoy games on the cheap, then definitely give Sakura Wars Columns a go. Next up, I thought I should include at least a couple of shoot 'em ups here because the Saturn has a ton of shooters available for it, most of them being very good, and I'm a huge shooter fan, so it stands to reason 
I'd recommend some, but the problem is that most of the shooters on the Saturn, because they are so awesome, are also very expensive and as such reserved for more hardcore collectors and I want to recommend something for everyone, so I decided to go with Gunbird, which is one of the cheapest shooters on the console at about 30 bucks or so on average, which it's definitely worth. It's a Psycho shooter, which automatically makes it awesome. They released a bunch of shooters on the Saturn, like the Strikers 1945 games and Sengoku Blade, and you can't go wrong with any of them, but Gunbird definitely has a special charm to it. Essentially, it plays exactly like Strikers 1945, but the graphics have been altered to make it a more light-hearted fantasy shooter bordering on cute -em up territory, but it's really fun and it can be especially challenging. There are eight different difficulty settings to choose from though that range from very hard at the top and quote unquote monkey at the bottom. So if you think your skills are on par with those of a monkey or if somehow you are a human monkey hybrid like Planet of the Apes, this game has a difficulty setting that was made just for you. But regardless of what difficulty you play it at, it's a great shooter with a variety of playable characters, very solid and fun gameplay, plenty of challenge, great graphics and sound, really just typical of the quality you got from Psycho on the Saturn. So if you're going to be adding some shooters to your Saturn collection, Gunbird is great and it won't set you back very much. So now let's jump into a 3D arcade classic that was ported to the Saturn, and that is Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive on the Sega Saturn was a 3D fighter that I really enjoyed playing in the arcade back in the day. It was very nice to look at, and it had an overall good aesthetic. This version of the game probably was the closest you can get to the arcade uh, at home. Being that this game was originally developed for the Sega Model 2 architecture in the arcade, I'm not surprised, as we've seen with other Model 2 ports to the Sega Saturn like Virtua Fighter 2, Virtua Cop 2, and Sega Rally, Model 2 ports on the Sega Saturn ran pretty well, and to some lesser extent, House of the Dead. The gameplay is very swift with trigger fast button presses for combos that all flow pretty naturally. I really liked their take on the ring out alternative with having the backgrounds deal damage whenever a player goes out of bounds. The music in the game is also really good. There was a quote unquote updated version for the PlayStation a year later, but I didn't care for its arranged soundtrack and overall look. To me, that version of the game didn't feel like the game I was used to playing, and being able to play this with a Saturn pad feels so much better. On top of all that, the game is dirt cheap at about 15 bucks or less. I guarantee you, you'll at least get that much worth of enjoyment, even without the nostalgia glasses. So if you're a fan of 3D fighters from this era and want to get a game on the cheap, Dead or Alive is definitely one of those to add to your import Saturn collection. Next up, so that there's a little variety in my picks and it's not just fighting games and shoot 'em ups, I have got a puzzle game for you, probably my favorite puzzle game on the console actually, and that's Puyo Puyo Sun, which is the third installment in the Puyo Puyo series with the Japanese word for three being Sun. So there's a nice little play on words for you, and this is also my most affordable pick. You can usually find it for under 10 bucks, which is a steal if you're a puzzle game fan. I think most people have played a Puyo Puyo game at some point, or possibly even one of the 16-bit reskins like Dr. Robotnik's 
Mean Bean Machine on the Genesis or Kirby's Avalanche on the SNES, but if not, it's a very simple premise. Just match up at least four Puyos of the same color to clear them from the board, and the bigger the combo you can rack up, the more junk Puyos you can dump on your opponent. The gimmick that's introduced in this game are the Sun Puyos that will drop onto the board as you rack up combos, and these Puyos can actually link up with any other color, so it opens the door to even bigger combos, and the whole thing is just very fun, addictive, and competitive, which is exactly what a good puzzle game is supposed to be. So if you've got a Saturn and you like puzzle games, and you've got 10 bucks plus shipping to spare, this is a perfect choice. Puyo Puyo Sun, a great and luminously colorful puzzle game if there ever was one. Next, we're going to jump into some Sega Saturn mech action with Assault Suit Lanos 2. The original Assault Suit Lanos was released in America on the Genesis under the name Target Earth, and it was the beginning of an awesome series of side-scrolling mech action games. The next game in the series was Assault Suit Falcon, released in the States as Cybernator for the Super Nintendo. Assault Suit Lanos 2 was a direct sequel to the first Lanos, and the game is awesome. Graphically, Lanos 2 really takes it up a notch with its 32-bit entry in the series with excellent sprite work, bright colors, and sprite scaling making it a real 2D visual treat to the eyes. The overall sound design is also very well done with crisp robot sound effects, heavy explosions with lots of thump, and a soundtrack that's fitting to the game environments. As far as the actual gameplay goes, Lanos 2 is pretty hard, but the original Lanos was hard too, so this will be nothing new to fans of the series. Lanos 2 is also a Japan-only release on the Saturn and is entirely in Japanese, but knowing the language isn't necessary to get in on the action. And with several copies online going for around 30 bucks or less, it's really a no-brainer. So if you're into games about mechs shooting the shit out of everything, then Assault Suit Lanos 2 is a game for you. Up next, I have another shoot 'em up, and in fact, what I think is one of the best shooters on the console, which is Sokyu Gurentai, which was developed by Rising, which is another company that had a handful of shooters on the system, including Kingdom Grand Prix and Battle Garega, which are both great, but also rather expensive. And this is actually the most expensive game I'm recommending today at about 50 bucks on average, which is actually very reasonable when talking about Saturn shooters, especially when it's as good as this one. The most standout feature in this game is the laser web ability, which you can deploy by holding down the fire button, and this allows you to lock on to anything that passes under the web and hit them with a lock-on shot that deals some heavy damage. It actually allows you to take out some enemies before they even enter the field in the same way that you would in Layer Section, which is another favorite of mine. You have three ships to choose from that all have different primary weapons and super bombs and different web formations and maximum lock-ons, so there's a bit of variety, but overall the gameplay is really good. Again, one of the best shooters on the console. It's fun, it's challenging, the controls are tight and responsive, and I love the laser web feature. It adds an extra level of depth to what's otherwise a very simple genre, just an all-around great game with some nice graphics and sound design as well, so while it's not exactly cheap, it's definitely worth owning if you're getting into import Saturn collecting and you want some good shooters in your collection without spending hundreds of dollars, Sokyu Gurentai is a great choice.
Now we're going to talk about what is probably my favorite port to the Sega Saturn from the Neo Geo. That is Fatal Fury Real Bout Special. Now let's get to one of those things that the Sega Saturn is really good at and that's 2D fighting games. Now I could talk about any number of fighting games that was ported onto the Sega Saturn but one of my favorite affordable fighting games is a port from the Neo Geo, Fatal Fury Real Bout Special. Real Bout Special is an awesome example of just what the Saturn was capable of when it came to the awesome arcade 2D fighters. The game's graphics resemble those of the Neo Geo counterpart and was the best way to play this game at home if you couldn't afford the Neo Geo AES. I mean, who could back then, right? I don't think I knew a single person who owned one back in the day. The gameplay is excellent and free-flowing with everything you could come to expect from SNK during its golden era. Controls are nice and tight with combos that are fun to chain together. Having the use of the Sega Saturn Model 2 controller to play this really does make for a better experience when it comes to controls. Now there is one caveat to playing this as well as other Neo Geo games that are ported to the Saturn and that is that you need the RAM cart to play. But you can buy a set with Real Bout and Real Bout Special that includes the cart for around $50 or less. Or you can get any number of other cheaper SNK titles that include the cart as well. However, if you already have a 4 meg RAM cart, a Pro Action Replay 4 megabyte, or a Pseudo Saturn Kai, then you're all set to play this game without any worries. The music is all arranged and was previously heard on the Neo Geo CD version of the game and it's all quite good. And there's also this really cool music video of Blue Mary that you get to watch at the end with some arranged sound and lyrics. I can honestly recommend a number of these Neo Geo ports on the Sega Saturn, but Real Bout Special is my favorite that's easily obtainable for about 20 bucks by itself, and it's overall a great fighting game experience. Check it out if you have the means. For my last pick, I wanted to squeeze in at least one more Capcom fighter, and I had a few to choose from. Vampire Savior and Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter were both considered, but I just couldn't say no to Cyberbot's Full Metal Madness, which has been a favorite of mine for a long time now. And it's definitely one of Capcom's lesser-known fighting games, more people are probably familiar with the lead character Jin Sao Tome from the Marvel vs. Capcom games, but this is a sequel to the arcade beat-em-up called Armored Warriors, and if you only know these two things, that it's a Capcom fighter and that it features giant mechs, you pretty much know it's going to be awesome. This is a much simpler fighting game than the Street Fighter or Vampire games. It only utilizes two attack buttons, and a boost button for super jumps and dashing around the screen. So it is a very pick up and play fighting game with a lot of variety as there are a whole bunch of different mechs with lots of special attacks and super combos, all of the things you want from a Capcom fighter basically, and a few things maybe you didn't know you wanted. It's very fun, great for competitive play for people of any skill level, and it's a great looking game too. I love the character and mech designs, they're really cool, and the stages are gorgeous as well with a lot of detail, and some of them even have some destructive elements, which is very cool, and the soundtrack is especially good on par with other Capcom games like Marvel Super Heroes and Vampire Savior. Plus, it's only about a $30 game, 
and it doesn't require any RAM cards to play, so if you want to fill up your Saturn collection with some great fighting games, Cyberbots is another perfect one to start with. So there you go, a bunch of great games to get your Saturn collection started. Uh, we will do more of them in the future, focusing on all different types of games, but this time around, we just wanted to help you uh, get your collection going with some inexpensive and very fun games. So thank you very much to Sarumaru for helping me out with this video today. Definitely go and check out his channel, it's awesome. Retro Japan, one of my favorite channels on YouTube, and uh, he makes some uh, pretty damn good video games as well. So link in the description to his channel, go check him out, and if you like what you see, give him a subscription. And uh, next time we'll be pairing up again to tell you about some more Saturn games, and definitely come back for that. But in the meantime, go get your Saturns, get your games, because obviously lots and lots of Saturn games were released only in Japan, and a lot of them are very good. Some of them are inexpensive, some of them not so much, like some of the shooters, for example. I'm a huge shooter fan, and some of them are very, very pricey. So when you get deeper into Saturn collecting, there are some amazing games in there, but you, you're going to have to part with a little bit of money. Uh, but not always. Some, some games as well that are expensive in the United States or in Europe, uh, they're not as expensive in Japan because they sold better. So in the future, we're going to do a video on games that are maybe pretty pricey in North America and Europe, but in Japan, they're dirt cheap. So it makes a lot more sense to buy uh, Japanese games as opposed to games from any other region. Uh, anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got interested in the Japanese Sega Saturn. And hopefully you get a collection started and you have some fun. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Take care and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.